so you have an elevated PSA or your doctor suspects prostate cancer, they want to do a prostate biopsy. Well, the way that you do the prostate biopsy can actually dramatically affect the likelihood of you finding cancer and being confident about your diagnosis. So without any more delay, let's jump into it. Most doctors in the United States are still doing a somewhat antiquated form of prostate biopsy called the transurectal ultrasound guided prostate biopsy, also known as the standard biopsy. This is where an ultrasound probe is placed in the rectum and 12 evenly spaced biopsy cores are taken from the prostate in a grid. However, prostate cancer is not typically visible on ultrasound, and physicians have adopted the use of these evenly spaced biopsy cores within the prostate so that we can hit the cancer even though we can't necessarily see it. If the cancer happens to be in between the spacing of the grid, then the cancer will be missed and your doctor will tell you there is no cancer found when in reality there is cancer there. When we look at the data, we find that one third of biopsies actually miss cancer when it's actually there or find cancer that underestimates how aggressive the cancer is when worse cancer is actually present. Since observation is an option for low-grade prostate cancer, being sure about the diagnosis is extremely important. The newer technique to diagnose prostate cancer is to use an MRI to identify lesions in the prostate first. MRI, unlike ultrasound, can actually identify tumors within the prostate. These tumors within the prostate can then be targeted for biopsy. For example, you can see a very clear lesion circled in red in this patient, which turned out to be an aggressive cancer. When we compare the grid-based sampling of the prostate, or the standard biopsy, to the MRI-targeted biopsy, we find that MRI-targeted biopsies are detecting more aggressive cancers than the standard biopsy. So when we look at it, we find that the data is very clear. The MRI-targeted biopsies find more dangerous cancers than the traditional biopsies. However, the question is not whether or not you should be doing MRI-targeted biopsy or the traditional biopsy. That answer is obvious. The question is, can we stop doing the traditional biopsies, or should we do them in addition to the MRI-targeted biopsies? And this is where it gets a little more complicated, so let's look at it. So while it turns out most dangerous prostate cancers are visible on MRI and can be detected by MRI-targeted biopsy, there are rare tumors that can be dangerous and MRI-invisible. Those invisible tumors can on occasion be caught or picked up by those traditional 12-core ultrasound-guided biopsies. So the question really is, should we undergo MRI-targeted biopsies alone, or should we do MRI-targeted biopsies plus the standard 12-core biopsies in combination? Fortunately, we have an answer to this question with a paper that I authored just this year. In our study, 2,100 men with an elevated PSA underwent a prostate MRI. If they were found to have a prostate lesion on the MRI, they underwent a traditional 12-core ultrasound-guided biopsy and an MRI-targeted biopsy at the same time. Much like what was seen in previous studies, we demonstrated MRI-targeted biopsy detected more of the dangerous cancers than the standard biopsy, but we also demonstrated that men who underwent both methods had about 6% more dangerous cancers found than the men who, went, who underwent only MRI-targeted biopsy. We then took it a step further. If men were found to have prostate cancer and elected for surgery, we then compared the aggressiveness of cancer found by their biopsies before surgery to what was actually found at the time of surgery. What we found is that men who had only traditional biopsies had a 30% chance of being upgraded to dangerous cancer at the time of surgery. For men who had MRI-targeted biopsies, that rate cut down to only 18%. But for the men who underwent both kinds of biopsies at the same time, their risk of upgrading to dangerous cancer went down to only 7%. This means that the additional 12 cores that were taken by systematic biopsy actually resulted in an improvement in the diagnostic accuracy of the biopsy technique. So when it comes to your case and what you should do, I think if it's possible, you should always try to get an MRI before your biopsy. And if your MRI finds something, you should have the biopsy targeted towards the areas of the MRI. Now choosing whether or not to get the additional systematic biopsy plus the MRI-targeted biopsy at the same time is a little more challenging. When you get that systematic biopsy or that standard 12-core biopsy in addition, you're getting 12 more biopsy cores, which increase your risk of complications like bleeding or infection. In addition, there's a higher chance, but 5% higher chance that you'll detect what we call clinically insignificant prostate cancer, a prostate cancer that doesn't need to be treated. So if you're really wanting to find a situation that gives you the most accuracy, then doing the combination is the best, but you need to understand it comes with some risks. Whereas if you are looking for someone who's looking for as little intervention as possible, but to get as good of a job done or, so, or sort of like an efficiency in your biopsy, then maybe you want to choose more of an MRI targeted biopsy only. Admittedly, this is a complex question. The data gives you a lot of really good information and should help you make a decision, but don't hesitate to discuss this with your doctor. And if you have questions, please write them in the comments. I'm happy to try to answer them. As always, making these videos takes a lot of energy and time. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe and share so that other people can find this information. Thank you. Have a good day. This is Dr. Adu. Goodbye.
topics discussed in this video are for educational purposes only and should not be used to make medical decisions. Every individual has unique circumstances which will influence their medical care and the application of scientific literature should be interpreted within the context of your general health. Please consult a doctor before making any clinical decisions.